Hi guys, I just wanted to do a quick little video on my little preemie. And even though she looks like a reborn, she's not one, I promise. But that's my baby. And she came at 24 weeks, so she was a micro preemie. She is 10 months old now, and she's wearing 0 to 3 to 3 month clothes size. And she's in a size 1 diaper. And there she goes stretching. But I just wanted to um, tell my story about her um, because I am a little bit more capable of actually telling the story without not being able to, I guess. Because before it was really hard for me to kind of relive that experience because she was still so little. Um, but basically, I um, from nine weeks, I started bleeding and it was very traumatic. Starting at nine weeks, I went, um, I was at the post office with my older daughter, and I believe she was around six months old at the time, and um, I was just mailing something to one of my friends, and I came out the post office, and I felt a gush of blood, and I knew I was pregnant at the time. I was about nine weeks, so I um, just, I just um, kneeled to the ground, and I didn't want to move. I felt like I was going to lose the baby. Um, so a lady, a nice lady came by and she called um, the ambul she called 911 for me and they came right away and rushed me to the ER. And I um, they told me I had a threatened miscarriage, but they didn't really go into de depth on what it was exactly, but I read the little pamphlets that they gave me and it said um, subchorionic hemorrhage, which means that you're bleeding internally, basically, because the, um, like the, I guess inside your uterus, I'm not sure what happens. It can be caused by trauma, or it can be just out of the blue. No, no trauma, and all of a sudden you start bleeding. I do know that once you have it, you're more likely to have it with your following pregnancies, so that's something I'm kind of worried about. For our next child because I know I want to have more um, but basically I've been bleeding off and on from from uh, nine weeks with her and then it got started getting really really bad um, towards the end around 22 weeks I went in for contractions and bleeding and they told me um, at Memorial Herman off of Ella they told me that <coughs> that um, my baby and I had a 50 50 percent chance of making it through the night um, and I remember the surgeon just came in and I started crying he was like don't cry and I'm gonna um, but I have some bad news and you know whenever they tell you not to cry you're gonna be even more likely to cry so I just started crying but then he told me not to cry um, because I was gonna shake the baby loose at that point I learned I had placenta previa um, and I actually was, um, I actually had a placental abruption as well, and part of the placenta was starting to tear away from my uterine wall. Um, so that was pretty bad news, and I just was bleeding, bleeding, and they gave me a magnesia to stop the contractions, and they gave it to me through an IV, and then I was transported to another hospital, um, I think it was called L.B. Johnson or whatever, but that hospital I got transferred for to was the worst hospital I've ever been to. Because basically they made me walk and everything and get out of bed, even though I was supposed to be on strict um, bed and pelvic rest. I wasn't supposed to even get up to use the bathroom. I needed to use a bedpan, but they forced me to get up and walk around when I was bleeding to death, practically. I lost a lot of blood and became anemic, um, and they would just basically check me every now and then and be like, okay, I don't see the baby's head, so you're good. And they did an ultrasound and they told me that I had, um, I didn't even have a subchorionic um, or a placental abruption. They told me everything was fine and I could go home, but I was in pain. Um, but they asked me if I was... Um, okay to go home and I just told them yes because I wanted to get out of there because the doctor the specialist told me something that I found very offensive and um, as if he didn't even appreciate or like acknowledge life 
because he told me that even if I reached 24 weeks, which is viable stage, that he wouldn't even try to save my baby unless I begged him to, which I thought was very cruel. So I just said yes, I could get out of there. And I, anyways, I had an appointment the next day or so with my um, doctors because I stayed in the hospital a good week at LB Johnson. Um, so I went for my 24 week um, checkup at my high risk doctor and they did an ultrasound and I didn't have any water. I was bleeding so much that I didn't even notice my water broke. Um, so I didn't know how long my water had been like that but I was also having really bad and strong contractions. So they wanted to hospitalize me and pretty much as soon as I went into the office and they tried doing the ultrasound I knew that something was wrong right away because usually when they do an ultrasound you see the baby and it doesn't look like just bones you see like a figure and you don't see bones well on this ultrasound basically when they did it they just did um, it just looked like a skeleton like literally just bones is all you could see and I knew that wasn't right and then also I didn't see any fluid or anything because really ultrasounds um, for those of you that don't really know how they work or just haven't had an experience to where you know um, because you haven't um, you don't have any kids yet ultrasounds work off of waves um, that are created by the amniotic fluid if there's no fluid it can't help the ultrasound so all you see are basically bones um, but yeah, that's basically what we found out and also another reason I could tell that my water broke was that I had a stomach a good sized belly the night before and like um, right away the next morning I woke up and my stomach was flat and I knew I didn't have the baby because I think I would realize if I was that far along if I miscarried um, so that's also what worried me because I was literally flat um, and you could see where exactly where the baby was, which wasn't common and normal for me. But they admitted me and they told me we're going to keep her in and try to keep her in for as long as we can. And I was 24 weeks and they gave me some steroid shots. Um, but within an hour, it changed from we're going to keep her in to we got to go now to the operating room. So... I was rushed in and I had a c-section and she then she was born and she was one pound five ounces I don't really remember anything um, because they try to do general anesthesia um, so that I could still be awake and see everything going on and see get to see her but it didn't work because when they started um, trying to like testing and touching my stomach with a knife it was very painful so they had to put me under full anesthesia um, but I did wake up when they um, said, oh, your baby's out, and they said, here's your baby. But I couldn't see her because she was so tiny. She was only one pound, five ounces. Um, so I thought they stole my baby, <laughs> and I had a panic attack and everything. Um, but the first day or so after I had the C-section was really rough because I lost a lot of blood, and I had to have a blood transfusion during surgery because of it as well. And um, I, they almost lost me and the baby. Um, but the day after my lungs um, started failing, I couldn't breathe. I wasn't intaking oxygen as well. But they didn't put me on the vent ventilator. Um, they wanted to see how things would go because I wasn't very low on my saturation. Just, a, just enough to cause a little bit of concern. Um, but it, thank goodness I didn't end up on the ventilator. I was fine. And... At first, she, this little one was breathing on her own, and she even fought the doctors when they were trying to put her IVs in when she just came out. And I went to see um, her in the NICU, and I nearly passed out. And I, ever since then, I found out that I actually am hypoglycemic um, now, so I have that going for me, and I still will sometimes pass out if I'm very low on sugar. So I'll have to have like a Dr. Pepper or something with sugar in it to kind of boost um, my sugar levels but um, after that I went in and saw her and she was doing pretty good and they're like oh she's a strong baby 
Then we get a call, um, once I left the hospital, we got a call that she wasn't doing well, she needed to go on the ventilator, so we were like, okay, well, day by day, we'll just take it that way. And then when she was a month old in the NICU, we got a call saying all her organs were shutting down and she wasn't breathing. They tried manual breaths with her and tried to pump oxygen into her, but she it wasn't helping. She was always... Um, having a saturation level of only 60% or lower, which is really bad. Because at that point, sometimes they can suffer brain damage because they have a lack of oxygen to the brain. So we went over there, and at first they didn't want to let me hold her, but I held her and started praying because I'm not sure about y'all's um, beliefs, but I do pray and I do believe in God, um, and that's just my beliefs that doesn't have to be anybody else's but that's what I believe in and I started praying and really within um, with me touching her and praying with her I think it really helped because within an hour she came back just like that and she was doing better um, the only thing they were worried about were her kidneys because they were failing and she hadn't peed in almost 24 hours. And they gave us 24 hours because they said, we've all already given her diuretics and everything. Um, so they told us they couldn't do anything else, that it was completely going to be a miracle if she pulled through. And then we got a call. Um, we went back home, but we wanted to stay all day with her. But we had our other daughter that's a baby too, so we couldn't stay all day with her, even though she wasn't doing good. Um, but we prayed and prayed and kept on calling the hospital and stuff to see how she was doing. And they finally told us at the 24 mark exactly that she started peeing and her kidneys started working, which we really think was a miracle in itself because they didn't think she was going to pull through. And she looked really, really bad. I mean, she was blue, she was swollen, she didn't even look like a baby. Uh, she didn't even look um, alive. It was really bad. But she got better around Mother's Day in the NICU. Um, she had to get eye surgery because she had um, retinopathy of prematurity, um, or ROP for, sure, for short. And that basically happens when the baby's um, blood vessels get too much oxygen when they're on a ventilator, or really anyone can have that happen, happen to them. And it can cause um, permanent uh, damage to their eyes because the blood vessels can burst, and then they can even become blind from that, um, from getting too much oxi um, oxygen without breathing on their own. Um, so that's what happened to her, and she, I believe, was in a stage three. Um, her retinas were already starting to detach, so she was stage three, which was really stressful around Mother's Day, but she got the eye surgery. She wears glasses now. She's not wearing them right now because she's sleeping, but these are her glasses, and she wears them whenever she's awake and doing stuff. Um, but she has like a, a negative 5.5 vision, which is um, three more points um, negative, and she would be legal, considered legally blind. But at least she can see, so we're looking at the bright side. She came home on oxygen, so we had her oxygen tanks and we had a little air compressor by her crib that would give her air and oxygen. And she had to be on the pulse ox too, um, which basically measures their oxygen saturation and their heartbeat. So it'll let you know if they stop breathing, which she did a couple times at first when she was home, which scared us really bad because all we wanted was for her to be healthy and stay home. Um, but luckily, she put, um, all you had to do with her was stimulate her, or like move her arm or um, kind of rub her back or something, and she'd start breathing again. So it was kind of rocky at first, but now she's doing a lot better. She's now over 10 pounds. She's almost 11 pounds. And she is adorable, and she's growing, and she's getting so much healthier. And it looks like she's awake now. Hi. And she got that big old belly. She has that big old belly from eating so much. <laughs> and she's going to smile at y'all. 
But that's my preemie story. And if you guys have any questions or you want any um, to request any more videos um, about her or her day, then just let me know. But I will let you guys go for now and thank you for watching. And say bye. Bye. <laughs>